This is Brett Lamone at Energy Technologies, and here we're going to show our automated tool and weld path generation process. So to begin, uh, we have the Acton viewer with a 7 degree freedom arm simulated being moved with the hardware in real time. So in the bottom left, you can see the hardware, which is performing a scan of a, of a simulated part with gouges that needs to be welded. The uh, interface on the left here is the scanner interface, and this allows us to configure the parameters of the point cloud capture process. After we capture the point cloud, we go to a, uh, a seam tracker or seam generation panel, and we process, and then we can display our point cloud and the path generated from it. So here you can see the point cloud of the part, and we have three paths that are basically calculated to be the bottom of the gouge. And this process involves converting to a height field, um, calculating the local minima, some thinning, and some branch removal, and some filtering to create that path. Next, we export it to our XML format. Then we import it again into our toolpath configuration dialog. And once we've been imported here, we can actually render and view these toolpaths in the simulation. Next, we go into our pre-canned um, welding program, and then we drag the toolpath into that, and we can update the toolpath that will be used for the motion. Here, we actually run the motion, and we start at a home position, set the tool offset, and then we move the, the end of the tip there along the path. This is a 7 degree freedom arm, and here we have a 5 degree freedom constraint. So uh, this constraint can freely rotate around its z-axis, but it's constrained in XYZ position and the roll and pitch along the tool. Once it reaches the end of the path, there's a two second pause to emulate the uh, TIG gas post flow to allow the, the weld to form properly. Then we retract along the Z axis and then return to its home joint position. This next video shows the real-world hardware being controlled in real-time from Acton. So as the simulation moves, the real-world hardware moves. And this is performing the same toolpath at the same part, but the part's in a slightly different location. So before this, we followed the same process that you saw in the last segment. So this manipulation director scene captures the, all these motions together and it remains the same aside from the toolpath when we switch between gouges or switch between parts. So we're able to exchange that toolpath out for a different toolpath depending on which gouge we are welding. This next video shows the view of the hardware. Here it's scanning a, a different part. This part is a concave part. We have two demo parts that are uh, concave and convex. This concave part has three different paths on it. And we show both the concave and convex to show that this might be a section of, say, a pipe or a cowling. And we could weld a gouge on either side of it, theoretically. In the, the front ground there, you can see some yellow spheres. And that is used um, as part of a calibration board calibration. Next, we see it actually moving the uh, the tip of the welder through a zigzag path. Now, this path could be, for example, a cracked piece of cowling, and uh, someone might have ground down the cracks with a, an angle grinder at these various angles, creating a zigzag path of gouge. You also notice the laser remains on after the scan. It's not being used at this point, it just remains on. This next one shows the same part, but we're showing a spline path. This would probably be harder to create in real life with an angle grinder. This could be, say, machined into it. Or even like a curved notch between two parts.
Thank you for watching.